the IMF is actually going to ban crypto on the G20 countries. Or are they? And Solana, oh, sometimes they're online. It's SOL. <laughs> All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. My name is Davinci J15, or Davinci Jeremy, actually. That's my channel, Davinci J15. You can find me anywhere on Davinci J15 on the internet, uh, any kind of like uh, social media. That's where you'll find me. Oh man, I hope you're doing well. I know I'm in the pipe, five by five, staying live here in Dubai. There's going to be crazy amounts of events this month. Uh, well, coming up um, today, tomorrow, and the next month, which is March, actually. Oof, wow. Hopefully, you will be able to make out to some of those cool events. Right, uh, right now, today will be the blockchain live event. Um, uh, if you can't make it today, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow uh, for the awards. Hopefully I'm going to be the winner of the best influencer of the year. Uh, I know you guys voted out, for, voted for me, and uh, last time I saw the count, the count was up to 1,300 votes. Thank you very much. Um, win or lose, I really appreciate my audience for going out there and voting. Okay, well we're going to have a, a, a cool show. Uh, we're going to be showing you some amazing stuff that happened over the weekend with the crypto. Uh, it's going to blow your mind. You won't believe what happened in the charts. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing that at the end of the news rant that I'm going to start off today. Right. Not with the main event, but with an interesting one, which is Ukraine netted 70 million in crypto donations since the start of the Russian conflict. Really? I was thinking, wow, that's a lot of money. But look how much all the politicians have in crypto. <laughs> look at this guy. Right? 7,711 Bitcoin in his possession. Because they all had to report how much Bitcoin they all have. Do they hold dollars? No. Do they hold gold? No. Do they hold the Ukrainian, uh, what's it called? Uh, Grivna. That's what it's called. Grivna. Do they hold that? No. They hold Bitcoin. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting how they're doing that. Well, you know what? Honestly, if you don't know, politicians, no matter where they are, no matter what planet you're on, no matter what country you're in, they're all criminals. And if you say, no, you're not, not in the United States. Have you seen what Nancy Pelosi, how she lives? When she had to live through the, the, the pandemic, she had like $50,000 fridge. Two of them. <laughs> Two of them. And she's showing you some ice cream that she had to suffer through. <laughs> so don't, don't give me that. And if you, you say, well, that's Nancy Pelosi. Okay, fine. How about Elizabeth Warren, who's telling everybody that they've got to live like poor, right? They got to give back. They got to give back, right, to the government. She flies on private jets only everywhere she goes. Okay, so don't give me that nonsense that politicians are only criminals in these, uh, in these, small, these corrupt countries, uh, smaller countries. That's not true, okay? It's everywhere. All right, so you can see that they got more, these, these corrupt politicians got more than what was donated for the, for, for, uh, the war. Oh, my God. So I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have donated to, to the Ukrainian war, not only because I know that both sides are, should not be going to war, and I don't know who's, who's in the wrong anymore, right, because, you know, uh, the governments are pretty corrupt, what either side on both sides so it doesn't matter who is the real enemy the real enemy is war and the individuals and politicians basically that is the real enemy basically politicians <laughs> right <laughs> it's not you and me <laughs> oh my gosh all right so let's move on to um you know solana faces slowdowns in the block pr production network restarted okay I, man it's a disaster sometimes online just sometimes online 
<laughs> it's SOL half the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow. Solana Network faced a slowdown in block production on February 25th following an upgrade in the validator software. The incident resulted in a disruption of to transaction led validators to downgrade the software and attempt to restore network performance. Wow. They really need um, multiple um, layers of testing here. I don't know what's happening with Solana, why their developers could have this happen. I mean, if, if don't they have like a test net to, re, to test these things, these upgrades? I don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, it didn't actually, the, uh, the downgrade didn't work, so now they're trying to reboot now. Uh, and look at this. This is this is kind of scary, right? Um, so who says this? Uh, it's um, probably one of the Solana developers, but let's let's just uh, read what he said here. Without all these debates, we would be back up in an hour. But every decision along the way, whether it's to downgrade, whether it's to restart, when to switch to from downgrade approach to restart approach, is debated. Voted, voting happens. We end up taking eight to ten hours to recover instead of one. Yeah, dude. That's why it's called decentralization. If you are a dictator, yes, you can do whatever you want really quickly. <laughs> but why we like crypto is because it's decentralized. Not just one person gets to decide what's going to happen. And so whilst you might say this is a downfall of crypto, it's actually a benefit. Maybe, just maybe, you should make the software correct. Because I don't remember all Bitcoin having these uh, upgrade problems. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? It, it's, it, you know, honestly... Um, uh, layer one solutions, right? This is what uh, uh, Solana is. It's a decent layer one solution, they, but it's complicated. And so, because they have so many people on the network and they've come, they're closer to, to decentralization than, than most other uh, cryptos out there, but not quite, it's going to be, you know, a little bit of a, a slow approach to upgrades and fixes. If there's a, ever a problem, Right. Um, that's what's going to happen. And the same thing will happen to Bitcoin. I mean, could happen to Bitcoin if they broke it, if the developers broke it. It will take even longer to make a decision on what to do next. This is why when Bitcoin is being developed and, and um, whenever there's a, a proposal, that proposal is debated for a very long time. It should be debated for a very long time before it actually gets out into the wild. And then you get to choose as a person who runs a node on Bitcoin whether or not that upgrade um, was going to be executed because you could just say, no, I can run the old version and that's it. And, uh, you know, if you run the old version, you're, you're, you will still continue to work. It's just, you know, the certain transactions will not go through because they have the new upgraded transaction. So that's how that works. Okay. Before I go on to the main event, uh, hopefully I'll see you guys all at Blockchain Live. I'm going to be uh, hopefully getting an award. I know you guys all voted for me. Really appreciate it. Make sure you head over to Blockchain Life and uh, join me there. Uh, I'm going to be there to today and tomorrow. I uh, hope to see you there. Okay, uh, let's go on to the IMF flags uh, debt restructuring hurdles. says... Banning crypto sh sh should be an option. I'm like, oof, what? Somebody's running out of some country's running out of money, and we're gonna ban crypto? <laughs> okay, alrighty, all right, right. The group of G20 nations have some disagreement over restructuring debt for d distressed economies. The chief of the International Monetary Fund (IMF) said on Saturday, adding. And by the way, <laughs> that banning private crypto should be an option. <laughs> okay, right? 
Apart from debt restructuring, regulating cryptocurrencies is another priority area for India. Okay. But why do they want to ban crypto? Why is it crypto is so hated right, by these people? Well, they go on to explain why. There has to be a very strong push for regulation. If regulation fails, if you're, too, uh, you're, you're slow to do it, then we should not take off the table banning the, those assets because they may create financial uh, stability risk. Yeah, I know what you mean by stability risk, meaning that you'll no longer be able to, to uh, print money and tax people. Oh no, horrible, terrible. <laughs> You'll no longer be able to rob people of their wealth, of their savings, of their job, of their income from their job. Rob that from them. Wow. Yeah, that's some seriously instability. You can't have that. <laughs> Oh, man, yes, that's how it goes. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Even if they did ban crypto, it still would not be the end of crypto. It would just be the very beginning. Um, we would be, uh, the, the people will still use it just like they use drugs, uh, just like they use all kinds of other banned substances and, and, and things. But this is even better because you can't smell it, you can't touch it, you can't taste it, you can't do anything. And it transfers wealth very easily so it makes it easy for people to uh, move wealth around even if it is banned because there will always be an underground of people willing to buy and so to survive because people need to survive your onslaught of nonsense and so the best way to do that is to hold on to crypto and that's why it will not go away no matter how much they try to get rid of it okay Let's get on to the charts. Oh man, take a look at that, right? Bitcoin. You know, I've had these uh, these points here, these uh, these uh, support and resistance line for a long time, and you know, Bitcoin broke this, and then boom, we were hoping that it would stay above it, but it didn't, and there we go, we bounced off the next resistance. Now I bet you uh, this might be the 61.8 from top to bottom here. Let's just see. Bitcoin loves it, 61.8. Hey, yep. <laughs> there it is, 61.8. Uh, yeah, you can't make this stuff up. It's a, you know what, Fibonacci levels are very critical um, levels. You'll see them happen everywhere in nature and in trading as well. Bitcoin loves it, 61.8. So, so look for it everywhere, and when you're trading with uh with bitcoin that it could possibly a higher probability of a bounce off the 61.8 uh level um every single time because uh bitcoin i don't know for some reason is very attracted to the 61.8 and uh it does it does that it does uh, 61.8 ping pong so uh won't be surprised if if we do this right we come back up to the 61.8 on this level here and reverse oh look at that <laughs> yeah right at the, the another support level so don't be surprised if that is another um uh, uh top here up here and then we've come back and you know do some sort of a, a w-ing action pretty amazing impressive stuff right the 61.8 so we might get some sort of w-ing action from the 61.8 ping pong okay so yeah that is an amazing uh thing to see uh, on the charts and yeah, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Um, I think the Bitcoin will probably do another pump up to to its uh, the secondary support level before um, there's 61.8 before we reverse. But let's just wait and see. Okay, heading over to Ethereum, pretty much the exact same thing. 61.8, it bounced off of it nicely and bounced off of my support levels as I've had drawn out for a while now. Uh, Ethereum also um, bounced off the top level of support. Um, and uh, it, it's um, trying to continue up to the second level of, of, of resistance. Sorry, I keep saying support, but it's actually resistance. Apologize for that. So these are resistance that, that were once support, but now they turn resistance. And so we are bouncing off of the resistance, 
bouncing from the resistance, which is approximately 1650, and we can head back up to um, 1683 uh, in the next little while. So look out for that. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you coming to today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good laugh with me. I know I did. Uh, make sure that you own some Bitcoin. Make sure you own some Ethereum because that is the future of money. I think we're going to see an explosive growth um, in those assets and crypto assets for the next bull run. I really do. This is why they're pushing so heavy with regulations. They see it too as much as I do. And they want to get in front of it before it gets out of hand. So uh, yeah, make sure you are positioned correctly for the next bull run. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.